It's 94.3 WIBC. I'm Daryl Huckabee with DD in the morning. And I'm excited this morning to have a special guest join us. I feel like I know this gentleman, although this is the first time we're meeting and talking to each other. But his name um, I've been hearing about for decades. And um, I'm just excited to be talking to him. And more importantly, sharing the information that he has with our audience because uh, he provides a valuable service. And I'm talking about attorney John Heyman from the Heyman Law Firm. Mr. Heyman, how are you doing this morning? You call me John and I'm doing just fine. Thank you ever so much for saying that. You know, it's interesting you say that. Uh, you know, when I get a call, for example, at night uh -huh. and, and I get a call from my answering service. So I immediately respond to that call and I and I, I get on the phone with the person and I say, hey, uh, hi, it's attorney John Heyman returning your call. And oftentimes the silence on the other end, either A, they don't believe that John Heyman truly exists, or B, they're a little shocked that I'm personally answering their their uh, call, uh, and I'm I'm a slave to my business, so to speak, and 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 because I have a great passion for it, and I and I look forward to coming to work every day, and uh, and I want to thank you ever so much for inviting me into your studio. I'm, I'm glad to have you here, and we're excited because of the personal service that you do offer to our community is very valuable. So, Heyman Law Firm, uh, personal injury law firm, correct? That's correct, and that runs a, a gamut of, 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 of issues from product defects. For example, you know, we I think I told you previously we were the last firm to have a lawsuit against the Chrysler Corporation before they went bankrupt and were successful. Uh, we do all kinds of product defect type of cases, and they're they're very very sophisticated type of cases from slip and fall cases. Uh, you know, if you fall down, if you fall down and hurt yourself as a result of somebody's negligence, that's a case. Dog bites, uh, motor vehicle accidents, of course, and I think what you really want to talk about is uh, our, our involvement and my my personal involvement within the motorcycle community. Yeah, absolutely. And personal injury is a thing that, you know, unfortunately happens on a daily uh, occasion. Yeah. And sometimes it's our own fault, but then, you know, a lot of times it's to the fault of somebody else. And that's where you come in to help, you know, um, bring justice to those types of uh, cases. Well, you know, we're supposed to be living, we're supposed to be living in a civilized society, you know, and as part of a civilized uh, atmosphere, one has a duty of care, believe it or not, to everybody else, stranger, and that includes strangers, all right? And there are different duties of care depending upon whether that person is invited into your home or a trespasser, and believe it or not, you even have duties of care to trespassers. But yeah. certainly you have duties of care when you're on the road and somebody's operating an 8,000-pound automobile and you're on a... Uh, a uh, motorcycle which weighs hundreds of pounds, let alone not not thousands of pounds, you know. Right. There's that so dude you, who care. So you're very involved in the motorcycle community. I actually very used much. to ride a bike um, back in the day. I used to live in uh, D.C. Maryland uh, area, so I'm okay. a former bike rider. I kind of retired from it, but um, you know that's where your area of um, focus is, so to speak, for your firm, and well, you do a lot for the motorcycle it. community. It's it's uh, we do a lot of work within the motorcycle community. We do. And, and I can give you reasons why. And I can tell you historically why we got involved. And I certainly I ride a motorcycle uh, not as frequently as I used to, because I don't think my reaction time is as good today as it was back years ago. And I had a pretty bad accident a few years ago and did a job on my leg and I Ooh. lost my I broke my leg in two places, uh, tore my MCL, and completely lost my ACL. So, you know, the ACL, you can't run if you don't have an ACL. But what it also means is if you have a heavy motorcycle, it's hard to lift it up, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I have two, and one is he real heavy, and the other is a lighter one. So uh, I, I, I use the lighter motorcycle more than I the, the heavier one. But don't ride as often as I used to because... I don't trust uh, my own in, in reaction right. time like when I was in my 20s or 30s, you know. And, and that's one of the main reasons why I retired from it. So I, <laughs> I can definitely relate. Uh, so let's talk about some of the prejudices, prejudices that, um, you know, that motorcycle community well, deals well, with. Let me tell you something interesting. So uh, being a motorcyclist many years ago, I said, 
I think there's something in, uh, in I, I recognize in representing ever so many of them that there were inherent prejudices that existed against the motorcycle community. Why? They'd have long hair, they'd have tattoos, they, and, and uh, the mere fact that uh, they were on two wheels, all right? Yeah. And when you're on two wheels, the perception is that you're, you're riding faster and that, and that uh, you're doing something dangerous and that you ought not to be on that motorcycle. Believe me, I've done a lot of case studies, talked to ever so many psychologists and have uh, uh, and hired lawyers, all of whom in my firm, all of whom also ride motorcycles so we can understand and appreciate how um, not only a motorcycle functions, but uh, uh, to understand and appreciate why their prejudice exists against motorcyclists. But now I'm talking to you and, and, and so what I do, for example, back years ago is I take a client and I'd bring them to a sh uh, store and I'd say, oh, listen, we're going to trial and I want to do my best to overcome this prejudice, right? You got to get a haircut. All right. And, you know, it's a play We're we're, you know, and I and I'm just the I'm the director of the play, so to speak. And so are all the other lawyers. But uh, uh, and so we're directing this play. And as the director, you got to uh, choreograph it so that it, uh, it plays well to the jury. That's the audience. Right. right. So uh, and you're telling a story. So you don't want any preconceived notions or try to eliminate as many preconceived notions as possible. So I, they'd, I, I'd have them get their hair cut. I'd have them wear long sleeves. I'd get rid of that tattoos. And now, for example, in the urban community, then you got the third obstacle to overcome, which you and I both know exists, is, yeah. the, uh, is the prejudice against uh, the African-American uh, person, all right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen it time and time again. So I can tell you that I know if they did studies, for example, and I hate to say it, that the value of a case take the same set of facts. Uh, and the and yeah. if you were an, uh, an African American with the same injury as a white person, yeah, the jury if, more if, likely if to award more money to that white person. All right, so that's my job to help overcome all of those right. prejudices. How do you do that? Well. My my, I I always tell all the lawyers, and we meet frequently in the firm, uh, and when we, we like to try cases, and and uh, I tell them, you when you tell this this story, you real the, the only way you can tell it effectively is to really truly get to know the the person, mm -hmm. and that means you know go over to their house, all right, have coffee, sit down with them, have a drink with them if you want. Get to know their family, you know, and, and get to know them as a human being so that you can not only know them, feel comfortable with them, uh, exhibit that comfort to a jury and tell the story about the person. All right. Okay. And if you if you really know the person, you're overcoming the prejudice and, and the fear right. that people have of of motorcyclists or, right. or of African-Americans, you know, I mean, I'm Absolutely. Talking yeah. the truth to you to tell you the truth. And, 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 uh, I think, uh, we, we take great pride in the fact that, uh, we, we study hard and we good. work hard at, well, at our craft. And, yeah. and the only nope. way you get good results is to be creative and to, and, and, to and to work hard at what you do and that applies to anything in life i'm absolutely yeah. now if you're just joining us we're talking to attorney john Heyman from Heyman law firm now you know obviously you do good in what um you represent in that realm of the motorcycle community over four decades of experience so you know and your firm knows what you're doing which is why you know some of the uh the groundwork that you just explained to us uh, makes you as successful as you are yeah well thank you ever so much uh I will say that uh, uh, we just put in a demand on a motorcycle accident case to an insurance company of uh, $23 million, all right? Oh. I don't expect to receive every penny of that, but I'm going to do my best to come as close as possible, and we'll try the case uh, if we don't get exactly what we're entitled to. And, th and this man's been through a living hell and, uh, and deserves every penny of it. Um, I've also told the lawyers in the office, I said, listen, have you been to the grocery store lately? 
because I know I, when I go, I'm always shocked, you know, at the prices of everything. I said, so everything has increased in value. The cost of doing business has increased. The cost of advertising has increased. The cost of everything has increased. Yeah. So the value of cases across the board, forget what you valued the case at three years ago, they're 20% greater today. And yeah. you hold out for 20% more, otherwise you take the case to trial. Mm -hmm. um, that's well, the you, reality. Yeah. yeah. Well, you definitely have the expertise and the uh, longevity in in the uh, uh, field of representing motorcyclists and personal injury. Now, mm -hmm. for anybody that may want to contact you or ever need you, hopefully, you know, you, you're the type of person that we hope we ever ne ha never have to call. No, but I if, understand if, that completely. And I, I and, and trust me when I tell you, I am not uh, uh, I, I'm not eager to, to get that those calls. Uh, but if you do, ha if you, if it happens, I want you to call me as opposed to uh, <laughs> the guy down the street because the guy down the street may not have as much experience or knowledge or expertise as as our firm has. Right. So, do you have a, a phone number or website? Yeah, uh, we have a. We pretty much have it all. All right. Okay. Uh, we have a phone number one eight hundred Haymond. That's spelled H A Y. M O N D, like remember everybody loves Raymond, all right? So I'm <laughs> Heyman, all right? And uh, and it's HeymanLaw.com is the website. Uh, and there you can go on the website. You can go to the YouTube, and uh, and uh, uh, and it shows us. Uh, we're on Channel Eight, for example. Every week I'm on being asked. It's called Ask the Attorney. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm a, a guest speaker, and I'm asked a uh, personal injury question every every Tuesday, and it runs two or three times a week. So I'm the expert, I suppose. You're you're, you're that attorney. Like I said before, we even started this conversation. I felt like I knew you before today because I've heard the name so much. I've heard the slogan. You know, I'm John Heyman, and that's my promise. If you fall down or if you go down, we'll definitely pick you up. So you bet. Yeah, that is a guarantee that uh, we, when the clients, clients leave this office, they know that we have busted our, uh, excuse my language, but we have busted our ass to protect the client's rights and interests. And when they leave the office, they know that we have dug and, and obtained every penny that's available on their behalf. And I pride myself on that. Awesome. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. I'm glad I finally met you after all these years of hearing your name and seeing the billboards all over Connecticut. So, you know, congratulations. Well, my, my pleasure. Congratulations my pleasure. on your success and continued success. So, again, 1 800 Heyman and HeymanLaw.com. Yes. And I'd also say if you go to our website, we have what's called an event guide. And we represent and we attend events, three events every Saturday, three events every Sunday. And I'm deeply involved in helping uh, the because the motorcycle community works very hard to raise money for various charities. Right. And we do a lot of uh, we do a lot of work on behalf of all kinds of charities, and we do a lot of work with. And by the way, there are a lot of African American clubs. Uh, mm -hmm. that are, yeah. That we we promote and we attend their events, and uh, I invite any of you who are a club member. Feel free to, I can speak at your club meeting, or we certainly want to attend and promote our event because we have not only me attending, we have what's called Heyman Girls, all right? These are pretty, <laughs> pretty uh, young women who hand out our calendar of events, which is oh, wow. also available to any, anybody who listens to you. And ever so many people refer to that calendar of events as their Bible. And right. because it says exactly what's going on week in and week out throughout the summer and fall. Well, I, I love the fact that you just don't represent the motorcycle culture. You live the culture. So that that's a great thing. And uh, kudos to you. Walk. I guess that's the old expression. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> All right. John Heyman, Heyman Law, uh, 1-800-HEYMAN, HeymanLaw.com. If you need him, you that this guy, this guy, this gentleman right here is the guy that you need to call to help you out in those personal injury situations. John, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been my pleasure, Daryl. Ninety-four point three WYBC. I'm Daryl Huckabee with the Rhythm of the City and Dee Dee in the Morning.